breakfast. Good morning, Nina. How are y'all? How about the guys and girls? Are y'all ready for something to eat? Uh, y'all ready for something to eat? How about that? You want, you want a little bit of banana? You don't want banana? You want banana? Huh? You want banana? Hey, green tag. You want a banana peel? Don't slip. Don't anybody slip. <laughs> What a great way to start out another week. Start out another week. <laughs> Come here, Nina. Come here, Nina. Here's a little South Fresh. Here's your little South Fresh to start out. Put a little corn in there for y'all. Come on, Nina. Snoopy, you're already up here, aren't you, Snoopy? Can't quite pet Snoopy, but you can see Snoopy stays. Yeah. Watch this. So this is a cool thing right here. All the wild deer and turkey right here. This is the way to start a week out right here. Chris is over at Sherry's right now, so I'm kind of taking care of the deer. But, you know, I've been doing this now for a while. And of course, she likes to feed them out of her chair, but won't be long until she's going to be out of that chair. But watch this right here. Now, I told you what happened with this deal here. We've set this up to try to, the deer just destroyed that part of the yard. And uh, so I bought some sod over here at Washtenaw Valley Sod Farm, my buddy Keith White over there. And uh, I put it down. I put this to try to keep the deer out. Is it working? Well, not really. <laughs> it's working a little bit. They're not in there quite as badly. Uh, but looking here what we've got. Hi guys. Hi guys. I have corn. I come in peace. We know you come in peace, Jimmy. We know that. Yeah. Look here what we have. Look here what we have. Hey, guys. Y'all ready to eat, huh? Yeah, buddy. We've got a Texas hunter feeder here that goes off like, I don't know, we run a lot of feed through this. It goes off four or five times a day. And then plus we get out here and... We get out here and throw too. We got a mix of South Fresh and corn. And look at this wild turkey right here. I'm just going to scatter it out because deer get kind of deer get kind of aggressive and see that thing's almost empty. I could just build it a couple days ago. Deer get kind of aggressive and, and they'll kind of the, the more aggressive and the meaner ones will kind of fight the others away from the food. So I kind of scatter it out good. Now, you know, I showed you in a in a video the other day, I don't know if it was an antler video, TC's horns and how red they were. Now you look now, they're not red. They're a natural color now. And uh, he's about a 12 point. That's about a six year old deer. So he's actually, his horns are about maybe the max this year. That's about the max you're gonna get. They may get a little bit bigger next year. They may go down. And uh, he was actually raised in a pen also, but he's been out free now for for two years running around. He's wild as a March hare in the pen. You couldn't get close to him. He's crazy. When I let him out, he tamed down just amazingly. And you can see how he's got almost totally his full uh, winter color, his gray color. He's lost all the summer color, the orangey look. It's down on his legs some. But uh, look, at, look, at this tur look at this turkey hen right here. That's, that's, a, that's a baby hen. I don't know where the rest of them are. You know, that's a young one right there. Uh, they were running around somewhere. Usually it's uh, quite, a, quite a bunch of them. It is a beautiful and great day to be alive in the United States of America. Uh, I've had a very special day on the lake today with uh, Skip Johnson, Oklahoma University baseball coach, a man that just loves baseball, <laughs> loves hunting, loves fishing. And he caught the biggest bass today, caught one over six pounds. We caught 67 bass today. And uh, we had a great day. We drove around a little bit on the mule, went in some of the deer stands. And then I walk out here right before dark. I walk out here and I got some of my babies out here in the front yard feeding. And it's just like the perfect way to end the perfect day. You know, uh, I haven't been fishing since the first week in August um, when I fished over at Table Rock Lake with St my buddy Stacy King and uh, we installed a my right height turret uh, for my live scope transducer on my ranger boat. 
And that's just a, an amazing tool. If you have a live scope, you definitely need a right height turret on there. It will enhance the usability of that live scope tremendously. And here it is, uh, the middle of September. And I, it's the last day I got to go fishing. I've had some friends here a day or two that, uh, that went out and fished and had some, a day or two of really great fishing. My partner's been down here and fished on the Eagle. I haven't been. Uh, I made a cast or two off the dock and that was about it. I think I caught two fish off the dock, but, uh, but the Lord blessed me with the day fishing today and Chris is over at Sherry's. I, I just talked to Chris, by the way, and she sounds fantastic. She's putting more words together and told me she had spaghetti for dinner this evening, which is fantastic. And, uh, just absolutely doing great. She went to, uh, Lightning's football game last night, uh, ninth grade football game, junior high football game. And uh, Lightning intercepted a pass on the 10-yard line and ran it back 90 yards for a touchdown. He took another kickoff and run it back out to the 50-yard line, almost broke that for a touchdown also. So Chris got to go to that, that uh, junior high school football game. And so just God is blessing us in so many ways. And how special it is to walk out here after a beautiful day and and see these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous animals out in the yard. Not only that, we're really getting close to a full moon. And as I kind of look up there in the sky, God shows me the moon. How far can I see? I can see the moon. How far is that? There is most of my babies this evening. And my two little babies, Nina, is right there eating. She's looking really beautiful, beginning to get a lot of gray on her, beginning to get, get rid of most of that orange. You can see some back there on her hindquarter. Now, don't any of you deer hunters be thinking about her hindquarter. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. She probably will never be anybody's table fair unless it's some kind of big giant mistake. I'll guarantee you. And we got everybody else kind of hanging around too. Uh, sprinklers going off. Keeping that grass growing. Keeping that Bermuda nice and wet. And there's beautiful forest. Forest is becoming a very popular deer. I love him. I guarantee you that. And we probably have pretty much decided to try to bait him back into the pen and let four or five girls go in there with him, and he'll be the only buck. He won't have to fight. And he also won't have to worry about critters. Uh, predators are really, get a lot of big bucks during the rut because the big bucks are not very cautious. They've only got one thing on their mind, and they're really not thinking about or caring about anything other than girls. And those girls get them in trouble because they can slip up and get caught by bobcat or pack of coyotes or a mountain lion uh, you know tc there was raised in the pen and i let him out last year and he's made it fine uh, for a year outside got to go through the rut last year and hopefully he'll make it through the rut again this year but that is forrest's first horns and obviously if tc was to decide to fight him uh, he could be he could kill him actually tc could kill him so we'll be we'll be leaving We'll probably be trying to bait him back into the back into the pen. Everybody's beginning to get their winter colors, even though it's still 90 degrees here in Oklahoma. But we have cooler weather coming in. Look at that lake. Look at that lake. I got to go fishing with the Oklahoma University baseball coach, Skip Johnson, great guy, great baseball coach, great pitching coach, worst of some of the greatest major league pitchers that are out there like now, people like uh, Corey Knable and Clayton Kershaw and several more. We caught 67 bass. And the hottest hold was within sight of what you're looking at right now. And the lake goes on down that way about a mile. <laughs> there is most of my babies this evening. And my two little babies, Nina, is right there eating. She's looking really beautiful, beginning to get a lot of gray on her, beginning to get, get rid of most of that orange. You can see some back there on her hindquarter. Now, don't any of you deer hunters be thinking about her hindquarter. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
She probably will never be anybody's table fare unless it's some kind of big giant mistake. I'll guarantee you. And we got everybody else kind of hanging around too. Uh, sprinklers going off. Keeping that grass growing, keeping that Bermuda nice and wet. And there's beautiful forest. Forest is becoming a very popular deer. I love him. I guarantee you that. And we probably have pretty much decided to try to bait him back into the pen and let four or five girls go in there with him. And he'll be the only buck he won't have to fight. And he also won't have to worry about critters. Uh, predators are really, get a lot of big bucks during the rut because the big bucks are not very cautious. They've only got one thing on their mind and they're really not thinking about or caring about anything other than girls. And those girls get them in trouble because they can slip up and get caught by a bobcat or a pack of coyotes or a mountain lion. Uh, you know, TC there was raised in the pen and I let him out last year and he's made it fine uh, for a year outside. Got to go through the rut last year and hopefully he'll make it through the rut again this year. But that is Forrest's first horns. And obviously if TC was to decide to fight him, uh, he, could be, he could kill him. Actually, TC could kill him. So we'll be, we'll be leaving. We'll probably be trying to bait him back into the, back into the pen. Everybody's beginning to get their winter colors, even though it's still 90 degrees here in Oklahoma, but we have cooler weather coming in. Look at that lake. Look at that lake. I got to go fishing with the Oklahoma University baseball coach, Skip Johnson, great guy, great baseball coach, great pitching coach, worst of some of the greatest major league pitchers that are out there like now, people like uh, Corey Knabel and uh, Clayton Kershaw and several more. We caught 67 bass. And the hottest hold was within sight of what you're looking at right now. And the lake goes on down that way about a mile. <laughs> I don't know if he'll do it anymore if we stand in here, but Forrest has decided that he wants to fight that swing set. And he had that thing going pretty hard and it come back and bopped him in the head there a little bit. That's a really fancy rope swing. And of course he's liable to get his antlers tangled up in here, but you can see he's decided to, he's decided to fight that. And uh, he's got a, most, most of his uh, velvet off today. That's just happened today. I just noticed as I saw the swing swinging. I just noticed that see, he's pushing against it right there. I just noticed that he is, uh, <laughs> now he's got his horns down under. He's liable to get hung up in that thing. I don't know what's gonna happen if he does. I guess I'll have to go out there and get him loose. But uh, <laughs> he's he's really pushing that swing around. He hit it a minute ago and it come back and hit him. And so he's trying to fight it there a little bit. He'll be doing that quite, see him chase it after it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And uh, it looks like, I, I can't tell for sure, but it looks like he's pretty much got his velvet off of his off of his antlers. And he pushes it and it comes back and gets him and then grabs, grabs him by the horn and gets tangled up in that mesh underneath. That's a great swing. The kids use the swing. I get on it in the camera. That's a lot of fun. But he's gonna get, he's gonna get his horns hung up in it there. <laughs> I remember Milburn playing with the sprinkler one day, having a lot of fun. He thinks that thing's after him. Look at him back up there from it. See it swinging around there. He thinks it's after him. He says, I don't know about that. That's crazy. Look at him. Look at him. He's kind of bowing up there a little bit. He's beginning to feel it. We probably can't. He's going to go after it again there. We probably can't leave him out too awful much longer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny right there. That is so cool. He says, I just don't know about that. That thing's alive. That thing's alive. He's enjoying that's of course, wrapped in a cord, and he's enjoying that feeling on the top of his head, but his horns get hung up in there. And then when it does, he doesn't know what to do. He keeps turning and twisting, trying to get them out. He's got them hung in there right now. I don't know if they can get hung where he can't get them out or not. I guess if he does, I'd have to go get them loose, but he is after it, isn't he? That is funny, funny, funny. He says, not too funny, Jimmy, it's got me. It's got me, oh, I got loose, I got loose, I got loose, I got loose, I got loose. It beat me up, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. <laughs> what do you think, Forrest?
Huh? That thing's pretty mean, isn't it? That thing's pretty mean, isn't it? <laughs>